Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name is John Zaglou. Great to have you here on Channel 59.3 B-Pod TV and Roku. Big news. The Bears have a new GM. Ryan Poles has been named the new general manager for the Bears. We're going to break it all down in just a second. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglou. If you want to watch more of this show, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. If you want to watch other shows on the B-Pod TV network, Search up BPOD TV on YouTube. I want to start today with this question. Out of the past four Bears GMs, how many of them had prior experience? Jerry Angelo, Phil Embry, Ryan Pace, Ryan Poles. How many of them had years as a GM before coming in? Trick question, answer zero. I'm not saying Ryan Poles is going to be bad. Don't stop watching or stop listening. I'm just saying, not a coincidence. Not a coincidence as to why that happened. You know, you would think after Ryan Pace, you'd bet better. You'd look for people with experience. Bears didn't do it. Just something to consider. They want a yes man. They've always wanted a yes man. Reports indicate that Poles is different. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I just find that funny. Years and years of Brian Pace and mediocrity. Years and years of Phil Emery and mediocrity. And you find another guy with no experience. With Bill Polian helping to lead your search. Give me a break. That said... I'm not disappointed in this hiring. Many of you might be expecting some long tirade, and there's no need yet. There's no need. I'm not mad about this hiring. I'm not totally opposed to it. The Bears made a move that seems to be okay. We'll talk about what Poles has done and who he is. Doesn't seem to be horrible, but I'm right down the middle here. You saw my poll on YouTube community. If you haven't, go check it out. I asked. What do you think of Brian Poles? Rate higher, cautiously optimistic, bad higher. The overwhelming majority was cautiously optimistic. That's where I am, too. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a great hire. So a lot of people talking about that, and, you know, it just gets me mad because you don't know. You don't know how good he's going to be. Nobody knows. Nobody knows anything about him yet. And to prove it, I'm going to read you some tweets about when Ryan Pace was hired. Here's Albert Breer. Rival exec on the Bears hired Brian Pace. Excellent. Coaches love him. Good pro guy. Hard worker. Very conscientious. Really? Jake Laser. Ryan Pace is a fantastic hire by the Bears. He's been ready for years, but always wanted to wait for his dream spot. Great move. That's my point. You're going to hear everybody in the national, local media tout this as a great move. Everybody. What are they going to do? Say no? A lot of these people are beholden to the Bears. They either need press credentials or they need sources to still be on their side. I don't do that. I'm not going to sit here and pull that on you. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he's going to do. Look, great years in Kansas City. Was the director of pro scouting when they drafted Patrick Mahomes. That's really his claim to fame here other than building up the old line in Kansas City. That's it. Not saying it's bad. The guy's a Super Bowl winner, already has a ring. Played an integral role in what KC did. Been there a long time, too. Outlasted three different GMs. And at 36, got hired. Pretty impressive, to say the least. But again... We don't know. We don't. And I will say this. We'll start to know based on the coach. That's when we'll start to know. There's been a report that came out about Ryan Poles. Apparently, there was one condition he gave to being hired. Quote, from what I was told by somebody who I think would know, he told them, okay, here's the deal. I'm doing the interviews, and I'm making the call. Don't tell me who Bill Polian wants. 
who Ernie Acorsi wants to hire or who Virginia McCaskey wants. I'm picking my head coach or I'm getting on a plane to Minneapolis. Love that. Absolutely love that. If that's true, love it. It's been reported. If that's going to be his attitude, I think he's going to do great here. Because for once, he gets a chance to be himself. Make moves on his own and either do great or totally flop. It's going to be all on him. See, we've seen in the past too many times, and that's why I brought up the no experience at GM thing, they're all beholden to the McCaskies or Ted Phillips or whomever is in that front office, which is a joke. This could be different. And it all starts with the head coaching hire. As of right now, the finalists are still the same, apparently. Jim Caldwell, Matt Eberflus, Dan Quinn. This is Poles' first big decision, and he has to make the right one here. GM, head coach, got to be on the same page. Ryan Pace, Matt Nagy, not necessarily. That partially led to their collapse last season and the year before with Mitch Trubisky. So this is a big first step for him to cement his legacy here in Chicago, to cement what he's going to do come next year for this team. Hope he gets it right. I'm sorry. If you came to this channel, if you came to this video and expected some big rah-rah, cheerleading-type spectacle, you're not going to get it. I'm telling you the truth. We don't know anything about him. Good resume for sure. And if this quote is correct, I like the guy like the fact that he's going to stand up to management, stand up to the McCaskies, I'm all for it. But the fact is, I want to see results. I'm not going to blame myself, nor do I blame anybody else, for waiting to see results. Saw a couple of people saying, well, this is Ryan Pace part two. Could be right. Ryan Pace, young guy, no experience, got hired, gone. Ryan Poles, young guy, no GM experience. Who knows what can happen? The one difference, which is true, and this was pointed out to me yesterday, as far as Ryan Pace goes, he was a director of player personnel for one year in New Orleans before he left. Poles, he's been around with the Chiefs for a long time, 12 years. Went up through the ranks. Different. Well, Poles hasn't always been the executive director of player personnel of the Chiefs. He worked his way up, starting as the player personnel assistant in 2009 and ascending to the director of college scouting. He was the director when KC drafted Patrick Mahomes. That's his claim to fame, and there's nothing wrong with that. Look, nobody knew who Patrick Mahomes would be. Nobody really knew. He did. He took a shot. He won. Part of that's good scouting. Part of it's luck. The Bears had a chance to draft Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. I mean, if Brian Pace took Deshaun Watson, I don't think he'd be fired. Even with the sexual assault allegations, wouldn't be fired. Played well. Sometimes it's all about swinging the bat and seeing what happens. And I'm all for that. That's fine. I mean, this guy has enough credentials to justify being hired. The question is, can he keep his job? Can he perform? And these old credentials mean nothing when it comes to that. You have to deliver results now. And he's going to get a lot of time. I mean, Brian Pace was here for six, seven years. He's going to get a lot of time to do this. I hope he can get it right. I mean, the guy's young. Good and bad. Good. Could I have this new school mentality? Bad. Inexperience. And the real question is, how much of KC's success depended on him? I get it. Director of college scouting, and they took Patrick Mahomes. Wasn't the GM. At the end of the day, he gave an evaluation. It wasn't his call. And I don't think anybody really expected Mahomes to be who he is today. So he's going to get more credit for the Mahomes drafting because of how great he is. That wasn't supposed to be his ceiling. That wasn't supposed to be who he was. And I'd love to see the scouting report he wrote up on Patrick Mahomes to see what he really thought he would be. I don't know where it is, but I'd love to know. So again, cautiously optimistic. And it's a shame, too. I really wish I could sit here and tell you, great hire, so excited, let's go, but you blame me? Can I? No. I know nothing. I know nothing about this guy. We know what he did in KC. Not a GM. No experience. Don't know. I read you the tweets. This is from Albert Breer and Jake Laser. 
praising the Bears for getting Ryan Pace. Praising. Everyone did the same thing yesterday. Saw a tweet from Field Yates, oh, this is not a good hire, it's a great hire. Okay. Maybe it is. We don't know. And nothing will convince me unless I see results. I'm not going to sit here and make some big prognostication claim. He's going to be great. He's going to suck. We don't know. We don't know anything. I will say this, based on this offseason, better hire a good coach, better surround Justin Fields with weapons. That's part of it. What did we say the point was? As Matt Nagy and Brian Pace were fired. Somebody come in and develop Justin Fields. That's it. Now, Poles is in charge of who does that, and Poles is in charge of player personnel. He will determine who the Bears hire, how to balance the salary cap. That's all on him. So when we look at Justin Fields in the future, I mean, we can all agree Justin Fields at least has some potential. Could be tapped, could be untapped. It's going to fall on these two guys. It's going to fall on Poles and whomever he picks his head coach. That's what field success is going to ride on. And that, to me, that's my indicator of how good Poles is. Now, Fields is a bust, different story, but that's my indicator. He was brought in. He accepted Justin Fields, right? A lot of GMs, when they come in, they want their own thing, own quarterback, own staff, own coach. He obviously likes Justin Fields, or else he wouldn't have come here. If he approves of Fields, or if he sees potential, the next step is build a good team around him. Make the Bears good. Come on. <laughs> We're waiting. you got to be patient, too. I mean, this is going to be a long, dragged-out process. We'll see my interview with Brandy Mueller coming up in the second half of the show on the podcast and on YouTube, too. He talked about how he hired a head coach as a GM. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, you have to hear it or watch it. I would hope Poles is doing something similar. Here's a quote, too, from Pauls from an unnamed source. He was in KC through three different GMs, and he kept on moving up the ladder despite the changes, says a lot. He was a finalist in Carolina last year, and with the Giants, Minnesota, and Chicago this year, clearly blew all four teams away. Again, good words, good praise, potentially correct. We don't know. I'm not going to be convinced unless I see results. That's it. For those of you who are cheerleading this, don't do it. You don't know yet. That's like last year when everybody wrote Ryan Pace apology letters for drafting Justin Fields. Well, guess what? He's fired now. A year after he drafted Justin Fields, fired. People writing apology letters saying, oh, I'm sorry, Ryan, for the way I treated you. Oh, he sucked. He was gone. I'm not going to sit here and cheerlead when there's nothing to cheer about yet. I would hope a lot of people have that same mindset or a similar one. It's not worth it. It's not worth getting crazy over this when nothing's happened. I want to see who he picks as head coach. That's a big thing for me. If he picks Dan Quinn, we got a problem. We got a problem. I don't understand the love affair with the media and Dan Quinn. Everybody loves this guy. Look at the numbers. 43 and 42. Blew a 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl, so can't coach in a big game. Fired going 0-5 midseason. Great defensive guru, 25th best defense when he was fired. Why are we conveniently forgetting about all this stuff? What are we going to do in three or four years? Matt Nagy's going to come back. Everyone's going to say, hey, he's an offensive guru. Wait, wait a minute. No. Time should not heal all wounds. Matt Nagy should never get another chance, and really, Dan Quinn shouldn't either. Great coordinator, not a head coach. Not a head coach. Apparently, Poles likes Jim Caldwell. Fan of mine, too. I like Jim Caldwell. Established, knows what he's doing, can work with quarterbacks. Likes Matt Eberflus, too. But he has no experience, either. And that would be a big problem to me. You bring in two guys who have no experience. Really? And that goes back to my open. Who do you think's really running things then? 
Two guys with no experience, not knowing what to do, and at the mercy of the McCaskies. And we're back at square one again. Wash, rinse, repeat, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, be level-headed when it comes to this hire. I will not sit here and say, horrible hiring, bash him, crap. Oh, but I'm not going to say it's great either. I'm not going to sit here and move my pom-poms and get all happy because we don't know yet. We don't know. Your favorite NFL insider said Ryan Pace, great hire. The people we all know and trust, who know everything, who have sources, goes to show you it's a scam. Now everyone's saying, hey, great hire, so excited. We don't know. That's it. There's no other way around it. There's no justification. There's no, well, but no, there's nothing. We don't know. And I'm fine with not knowing. I'm okay with that. It's not time to know yet. I'm not going to judge somebody based off a small resume and no moves yet. You better believe I'm going to start judging you when you hire a head coach. Manage the salary cap. Sign certain guys. Get rid of guys. Field a competent team or not. Then I will judge you. Then I will say good or bad. Right now, there's nothing you can't say. And that should be the moral of this entire story. We have too many people overreacting or underreacting. I've seen a lot of people say horrible hire. How do you know? How do you know? He has no experience either. So you literally cannot say a horrible hire. There's nothing to base it off of. But you can't say it's a great hire either. Why? No experience. Nothing. And has not done one thing yet with the Bears. So for those of you wondering, I had a lot of messages, actually. What do you think? Is this good? Are the Bears moving in the right direction? I don't know. And I'm okay with that. I don't need to know. And I shouldn't know. I shouldn't know a thing. No experience. You can't say he's great. Can't say he's bad. Don't know. I will say this, though. Hiring a head coach is priority number one. Better get it right. I'm sick of the coaching carousel. I'm sick of Mark Crespin, John Fox, Matt Nagy. Get it right. Simple. And you have Jim Caldwell in the building. Jim Caldwell. Established veteran. You're doing something right. Get it right. Seal the deal. Then we could talk about, hey, Ryan Poles is doing something good. Manage the salary cap. Build an offense around Justin Fields. Especially in O-line, which he did in KC. See, then I could say, yes, great. But none of that's happened yet. And it won't happen for a while. we got a long way to go. So if you came here to see some big, bombastic reaction, whether it be me cheerleading or me bashing it, not going to happen. Not this time. Nope. Not going to do it. Thing I find funny, Albert Breer and Jake Glazer, I have the tweets in front of me, loved Ryan Pace, gushed over Ryan Pace. Scam. Joke. I'm not going to be put into that category. No way. Here's the funny thing, too. Everybody's going to say it's good, right? Everybody has a source. Everybody has someone who knows somebody. I know this guy. Oh, he was my college teammate. He was my roommate. Whatever. Of course they're going to say he's a good guy. Probably is. Of course they're going to say it's a great hire. What are they going to say? Horrible hire when they don't know? They look like an idiot. So just don't get caught up in this whole cheerleading saga. The cycle of cheerleading. Back and forth, back and forth. I would hope, if anything, the media is pretty hard on them. Just like they were on Ryan Pace, right? Shouldn't it be the same treatment? Shouldn't we be questioning the head coaching search? The way he'll build around Justin Fields? Does he believe in Justin Fields? Big question. These are things we should be asking. Not... Hey, woohoo, new GM, it's not Ryan Pace, I'm so happy. Okay, what if he's worse? 
<laughs> what if he's worse? We don't know. That's my take. We don't know. I have a stronger take on head coach. That's because we know a lot about these candidates. Not about him, though. We don't know a lot about polls yet. We will. Him hiring a head coach is the litmus test to start. If he gets this wrong, you're going to hear it from me. I'm not going to be happy. No. Dan Quinn should not be a head coach. I don't care how hot he is. I don't even understand why he's hot. For what? Oh, defensive coordinator for the Seahawks. Oh, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Who cares? Head coach in Atlanta. Big-time quarterback, 43-42. and 42. Fired midseason. Goodbye, Dan Quinn. That, that should be the end of the story for him. And yet he's a finalist. I'm going to have a problem. Matt Eberflus. Not saying he's bad or good again. No experience. Jim Caldwell, super happy. And, of course, he could expand the list, polls, and interview more people. I suggest he should. In the end, though, we all want the same thing. We could debate back and forth about head coaches, GMs, how to develop Justin Fields. But we all just want to see something significant. The last time the Bears won a playoff game was 2010. Won a playoff game. But the NFL's founding franchise? That's ridiculous. 12 years without a playoff win. Now, the last time they made the Super Bowl was 2005-2006. So, it's not good. No matter what. We can all agree it's not good. Things have to change. This could be the start we don't know. Hope they do get better. I hope I could sit here in a year and say, hey, Ryan Poles, great hire, so happy. This team's on the up and up. But to say it now, to say it's happening, here we go, when he's done nothing of significance other than get out of his car and walk into Hallis Hall, is ridiculous. And I hope many of you will not participate in this media circus and cheerleading. Thanks for watching today's show. Here at VPON TV, channel 59.3 in Roku. Really appreciate the time. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Z Gluel. If you want to watch more of this show, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com and make sure you keep it here every night at 1030 right here on VPON TV. So long, everyone.